Okay, so today we're going to talk about persistent, oscillating, and geographical wind shifts. Does anyone know what a wind shift is? No? No. No one? Do you have any idea? So when you're sailing your boat, and all of a sudden, you, <laughs> your sails lose all the wind in them. What do you think happened? Boat stops. The wind. The change. wind shifted. The wind. Yeah, the wind That's it. Do. Very yes. good try. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so a wind shift is when the uh, wind moves from its current bearing and changes our close hauled course, which is when we're the closest we can be to the wind. Okay. And um, wind shifts can take us off guard, so it's always really important to be looking ahead on the course, looking at other boats to see if there's a wind shift coming down the course. Okay and also to see if there's any kind of land masses that are affecting the wind and how it is coming onto our sails and flowing over our sails, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about the objective of our lesson is to clearly define and describe persistent, oscillating, and geographical wind shifts. So um, we already started by brainstorming what wind shifts are, and now we're going to talk about the specific wind shifts. So persistent wind shifts. Does anyone know what persistent means? They keep on coming. Yeah, so it just time. keeps going in the same direction. Yeah. So a persistent wind shift can look something like this. And that is when the wind is going to come from straight down the course and maybe shift this way. Or it could shift in the opposite direction, like this. Okay? And so when the wind shifts to the right, like this one, see how the wind, the arrow is going from the left to the right, the wind shifted right, that means that it's backing, the wind is backing. So that's like, if you can think of a clock and you think of counterclockwise and going backwards, okay? So that's how you can remember it. And then the other one, when it shifts to the left, it means that the wind is veering, okay? So those are both types of persistent wind shifts. Um, and then the next one is oscillating. And Augie, do you know what oscillating means? Yeah, it's when it goes back and forth. That's perfect. Okay, so this is a diagram of an oscillating wind shift. And so that's when the wind shifts back and forth. It can be every hour. It could be every 10 minutes. It could be over any time interval, basically. And then the last example is of a geographical wind shift. And does anyone have an idea of what a geographical wind shift might mean? Going around like a landmark? Yeah, yeah. So it could be a building, or it could be um, could be a mountain. Do you have any? Do you guys have any suggestions of what a geographical uh, marker might be? A buoy. A buoy. Buoys aren't quite big enough to make a large impact on our sailboats, but that was a really good suggestion. Um, do you guys think the shoreline could make a difference and how the shoreline curves? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I have a picture here also of a really large building that's making a difference in the wind. And you see how it goes around and then comes back together. And then that can create a really big effect for your boat, okay? And so these two pictures, one shows you a building, and that's a geographical obstacle, basically. And the wind has to move around it. And then this is one of the land. And actually here in Kingston, we have really big um, effects from... Uh, geographical wind shifts, or wind shifts, sorry. Great, so now that you understand what the types of wind shifts are, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions and we're going to do some problem solving, okay? So when we're sailing on a normal course and we're racing, going as fast as we can, we're going from, and the wind's coming from the top, and we're racing like this, going upwind and then downwind. Uh, if the wind shifts to the right, how could that be advantageous for us? Do you know? Throw out suggestions. It speeds us up. It wouldn't necessarily speed us up, but um, it could be really helpful because if we were a boat sitting right here and then there's another boat over here, uh, that's a little bit closer, um, the one that's closer to the wind is going to be able to head up higher 
and then they'll make it to the top of the mark fastest, and then they'll be able to complete the course faster and win the race, okay? Um, the next question is, um, how could we predict wind shifts? Edan, do you have an idea? No. <laughs> no, no thoughts. What if, what are you looking for on the race course? Do you look at other boats in front of you or behind you? Sure. Yeah, so you want to look at boats ahead of you to see how they're being affected by the wind and so that you can prepare yourself in the same way so that you can take on the wind shift as well and use it to your advantage instead of getting caught off guard. Um, any other suggestions? No, you guys got it? Um, another really good thing about uh, looking ahead on the course, if you're looking for clouds or anything like that, um, you're going to have the most pressure and the most breeze under clouds. So if there's a lot of clouds over here and not none over here, Edan, where would the best spot be to sail? Not with the clouds? No, with the clouds because underneath the clouds there's the most wind, the most pressure, okay? Okay. All right. So um, just to review all that, how are we going to use wind shifts to our advantage? What are we going to do on the course, Jules? We're going to pay attention to the other boats and see how the wind's affecting them so we can prepare ourselves ahead of time. Nice. Yeah, that's really good. And where do we want to sail to on the course? Do we want to sail to where the clouds are? Or Riley, do you have any ideas? Under the clouds. No. Under the clouds. Yeah, nice. Good stuff. Okay, so now we're going to play a quick game. And do you guys remember these pictures I showed you at the beginning? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So we're going to make two teams. How's girls against boys? Do you guys like that? Yes. Awesome. You are going to work together in your groups to match the pictures to the uh, labels, which I'm not sure where I put them. Oh, over here. Perfect. Okay. So. We're going to have the girls go first, and the guys can't look. So you have to cover your eyes, and we're going to count for them and time how long it takes them to match them all. I'll tell you when it's good to go. They have to sort them all out first. Okay. All right, ready? Close your eyes, and we're going to count. Go. One, One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Nice. 16 seconds. Let's check. All right. That looks good. That looks good. That looks... No peeking, Avi. Ooh. You guys mixed up your persistent and veering and backing. So we'll review that after so we don't give the boys any hints. But it took you 16 seconds and only one mistake, so that's really good. Okay, guys, I'll let you sort those out and then we'll time me out. Okay, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Awesome. No, that's great. Okay. So we have our geographical and the shoreline. Good. Persistent, sure, yep. Backing, <laughs> good. Veering, good. You guys didn't mix that up. Very good. Oscillating, good. And geographical, the landmass. Good job. So slow and steady. So the girls, <laughs> yeah, slow and steady. Good job. So I'd say that's about a tie, right? Yeah. yeah. Very good. And so the only uh, error that you guys made was with persistent shifts. And so you confused backing with veering. So backing is when it goes. Right. Yeah, yeah. So backing is when it goes to the left, which is counterclockwise, and then veering is to the right, so clock. Yes, clockwise. Okay. Good stuff. Good review, guys. Ready to go sailing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>